Hey ladies and gents, this is Linda Fetchik 777 In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a fabric pumpkin from start to finish. We're not going to decorate it. I'm just going to talk to you like record it in real time and we're going to make this uh, pumpkin, pumpkin together. Um, and the reason that I am not going to show you how to decorate it in this video is because uh, this is probably going to be a, a little over a half an hour in itself just making the pumpkin because there's going to be beginners watching this video as well. So I may take a little bit of time, you know, explaining some of the, the steps a little more than uh, those of us that might be a little more advanced um, for making this pumpkin. I will have a link down below that shows you um, how I do decorate this uh, pumpkin in Fast Forward. Um, and that's going to be a project for a design team that I'm on for Renee Bouquets, but um, let's start with this pumpkin. Now to begin with, what I've chosen, I've, I got this a real pretty ribbed kind of sweater fabric um, at a thrift store. Um, I picked it up, it was a yard for two dollars. It was interesting because most times, you know, when you buy a yard of fabric, it's folded, you know, it's open. But uh, when I went to open it up, it was all one continuous tube of fabric. There was no seam whatsoever. So of course I cut it um, down to use what I needed. But what I loved about it is since we're heading into fall, it, it just looks cozy. Um, and so I like this ribbed fabric. Um, other options that you could choose, let's just go over that real quick, for making um, maybe a fabric pumpkin, a shabby chic pumpkin is kind of what I'm going for, is like there's this I found at a, a Goodwill store. It's actually a blanket, but I love, it almost has like a burlap texture. I love how it's see-through. Um, I could cut, the, I got it for like a dollar, so I, I don't worry about it. And it's very small, like lap size. So that would look really cool, like if you wanted to make a trio of pumpkins, or of course a pumpkin on its own. I think that would be really cool for texture. Um, you could also choose, I found this again at a thrift store. It's another type of ribbed fabric. It's kind of an oatmeal color. I think that's really cool. would be make a nice um, shabby chic pumpkin. Or you can really go kind of, uh, not crazy, but um, this is like a fur, a really thin kind of furry fabric. And I got this at Walmart. I think that would just look sweet as a pumpkin. So that's an option. Um, the other option that I thought would be cool was using some actual crochet. Now, let me pull this out of the way for a minute. This crochet, I actually got this years ago to cut these little doilies out of. But look at this if I go out look um, and spread it out. Look at that. If you cut this big shape out and then it formed into a ball for a pumpkin wouldn't that be beautiful for the outside of a pumpkin so some things to look for now when I did this I cut this fabric I am thinking about and I probably will um, I want to overlay it with some lace but wouldn't it be pretty if you had a crochet fabric maybe not this particular one to overlay because then you wouldn't really see, unless you didn't care, you wouldn't really see the fabric underneath. But if you had like a crochet piece, see on the outer edges where it's got these larger holes and you wanted your fabric to show underneath with these larger holes would, would be pretty. A more open weave crochet fabric would look beautiful. So there are some options to make pumpkin okay now let's get down to business this piece of fabric I cut I originally was going to start with this lid um, and this lid is a little over almost 12 and 3 quarters and so what I did first is I just traced it onto some tissue paper kind of formed the tissue paper in a ball and decided that was just a little bit too small um, for me for what I wanted to do so I actually have this big wooden circle that I got at a Habitat for Humanity resale store that I'm going to make a sign out of. Um, and this big circle measures about 18 and 3 quarters inches big. Perfect. 
So I use this as my pattern. But if you don't obviously have this big of a wood circle lying around, you could take your largest uh, bowl lid and then see here, your circle for your pumpkin, it doesn't have to be exact perfect circle. So if your you know, lid measures 12 inches, just go out about 3 inches from the edge and then cut kind of a circle on the outer perimeter of that, of, of your lid, to the size that you want. And then, of course, you'll come up with this scenario. Okay? So I found this lace. So there's the, your, our circle measurement. I found this lace at Walmart that I'm going to use to overlay on this because as you can see even just from the height of my camera you can still see the ribbed through this lace and I chose this particular lace because the pattern wasn't real busy okay it has a large pattern on it but you had a lot of open space where there wasn't anything there didn't look real busy which allows us to see the fabric through this lace. So I am going to cut out a circle the same size as this ribbed circle. Okay? I'll do that off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my piece of lace cut out here, roughly the same size of the circle. And what I've done is I've just folded this uh, circle in half and then in half again so you kind of have this nice little fan shape. And what I'm going to do is right here at the tip, because what I want to go for now to start is uh, making some sections to my pumpkin. But I kind of just want to mark roughly the center of my pumpkin with just a little straight pin. I've got it just sticking out for right now. Let me bring my camera in a little bit closer. Just sticking out for right now until I kind of reopen it again. And kind of right there will be, I'm just going to make like a little spot, like right there. So that's roughly the center, um, get my light fixed here, of the middle of my pumpkin. Okay? So, now, Let's talk a minute first stuffing real quick because it's on my brain. When we go to stuff this pumpkin, you don't need to run out and buy like this expensive stuffing, okay? What you could do, go to Walmart, you buy like the cheapest pillow that they have. It's like three or four dollars. And it's all full of stuffing to use. Way, way cheap. Okay, so way, way cheap for an option of some stuffing, especially if you're going to make, you know, a lot of these. Or you might have an old pillow that's just not its greatest and you need to replace anyway. Use the stuffing out of it. Just a thought, okay? Um... All right, so I've got the middle. Now, to make my sections, what I am thinking is this. Um, you could use, let me backtrack for a minute for what I'm about to use. You could use some embroidery floss because embroidery floss um, will unravel. And it's like three strands of, of floss, and you can buy those for like 49 cents. You could use yarn. If you have that on hand, I happen to have some crochet string. And the reason I say the, the embroidery floss, because being three strands, if you put um, two to three of those through the center like we're going to do here, and then you just unravel them, you've already got your sections. Whereas what I'm going to use on hand is my crochet string. I have to make, I think I want like seven sections. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think I want seven sections. I like an odd number, so I need seven of these strings, whereas if you use an embroidery floss and just go with like six, you know, two um, strands, then you have six sections once you untwist the embroidery floss. And I guess, I mean, I could untwist this too, but it doesn't bother me. So what I'm going to do, this is where we're doing it together, 
is to make the sections, the reason I pin this is because I'm going to bring floss through the center of my pumpkin. And I need the floss to, of course, be long enough to come up to the edge here. Okay, and since I'm not using embroidery floss, I need seven of these strings to come through the center of my pumpkin. Whereas if you use embroidery floss and you untwist them apart, you only need to put two through the center and then you untwist them apart and you can separate the strings and then you've got automatically six sections. Okay, you know, if you're okay with an even number. So what I'm going to need is I need a little bit of room to kind of tie a knot. And then I need, you know, just a little extra to kind of come around to that outer edge. Where's my pin? So here's my pin. That's enough to go to the outer edge, but I'm going to add just a little extra to be on the safe side. Probably don't need that. We can cut that off, though. So this, for my, you know, 18 and some odd inch diameter pumpkin, um, it's just a little over 12 inches. So you know what? We're just going to go with, I'm going to make seven 12-inch lengths of string here. Okay. Roughly. So there's one. And I'm doing it this way so that I can hide my strings. Some people would just kind of do one string, and which I did see, um, and they'll wrap it. I saw it on like a written um, tutorial thing. They'll wrap it. Oh, how do I say it? So if this is your pumpkin, they'll wrap it almost like this to make their sections. So they'll, like, this is the bottom of your pumpkin, they'll wrap it, and they'll pull it taut, you know, to make, like, a section. And wrap it around the other side and make a section, and wrap it around this side to make it like that. But I don't want it all to crisscross. I want it to be all kind of nice and neat. So, um, I will be right back with seven of these strings cut. Okay, so I have seven of these strings cut, and what I'm using is just these uh, large needles called yarn darners, and if you can see how big the loop is to get the um, string through, that's why I'm using these. They're somewhere around $2, I think, at Walmart. Um, and I also use these, just as a hint, um, when I'm working on projects because they are big, um, they're nice for, you know, like getting out excess glue or something like that or if you got you know if you want like a poke tool to poke through paper to add a brad through um, you know dollar something for these versus buying a poke tool for seven or eight dollars which is kind of ridiculous so these kind of have double duty but they have these nice big holes through the top and so what I'm gonna do is take one of my strings and I'm gonna go through the center of this hole. I'll show you one and then I'll go off, or a couple of them, and then I'll go off camera and finish the rest. Right through, I should have put my glasses on. Okay. Because my string is kind of big. I'm using like a size, if you're interested, um, crochet thread or, you know, if you've got just regular string is fine. I think this is like a size three at Walmart, a couple dollars. Um, anyway, so, and you can definitely use even like a size, you know, any other size. This is like a size three, though, a nice string. So, okay, I've got it just kind of looped on my needle. I'm not going to make any kind of, you know, knot or anything yet. And so what I'm going to do is come down to the center where I've got my pin. Okay. And once I get one through, I'm just going to kind of somewhere in there, I can take my pin out now poke my needle through that so that it goes through both the layer of the lace and the fabric through the other side, okay? And then pull it through just to you kind of get your little short edge out, okay? And then what I'm going to do, being careful, let me bring my camera up because knowing me I'll just pull that right back out. All I'm going to do is tie a little knot on the end of that string, okay? Does it matter if there's excess? I'm just going to tie a knot. All right now, mind this that 
remember we're doing this kind of sort of live and it's just my creation from my head of how I want to do this there's no rhyme or reason I didn't learn it I just kind of thought this might work for what I want to do so now I've got a little knot in there okay so let's come back through and pull that thread back through okay it's not going to come out because we've got a knot okay now I'm going to go back in I'm going to do the same thing six more times okay Where's my end? And you can go as many sections as you want. Like I said, if you want an even number, you can have six. If you want five, if you want four great big fat sections. I notice most pumpkins have about, you know, six to seven sections, uh, depending on the size. I keep pulling this thread up because I'm kind of moistening it to get it through my needle. So I've got it through like this, just a little edge hanging. I'm going to go right back into where that other one was, or, you know, just kind of right next to it. Just somewhere around the same area. Poke it through. I'm going to bring this out until that little short piece pops out. There it is. Take it off my needle. Okay, tie a little knot. Just kind of somewhere near the tip. And look at this thread. This is what I want to show you. Embroidery thread does the same thing see how it kind of ravels apart I'm gonna leave it but embroidery thread and you could make this could work for you embroidery thread does the same thing it ravels unravels apart so if you wanted to just use a couple pieces of these unravel it apart now you know you could place two in here knot it up and then on this side unravel the strings apart and now you have six strings you see what I'm saying? Versus I'm going to put in, you know, seven different strings, obviously, because I want seven. But now you have six strings, okay? So that's a way to do it. But I want mine to kind of just be a little bit thicker, I guess is why I'm going this route. I want my strings just a little bit kind of thicker and shabbier. Okay. All right. So I've got that. Got a knot in it. I'm going to come back and pull that piece back out. Okay, so now they're both stuck in there. So I'm going to do that again five more times. So I'll be right back. And when I come back, I'm going to have, you know, seven strings hanging out. Okay? Okay, so I have all my seven threads coming out through the center. And on, it looks like this on the inside where they're knotted off. Um, and that's okay. We're just going to leave that because none of that's going to get seen. Okay? So the next thing we need to do is we need to begin to add a running stitch around the perimeter of the pumpkin. So since I have, you know, two fabrics, I've already just kind of spaced a few pins around the outer edge so that my fabrics don't come apart as I'm doing a running stitch. Now, for this running stitch, I would suggest um, using an upholstery thread. It's a lot thicker thread than just a regular... Um, all-purpose right there all-purpose thread because when we begin to gather the pumpkin together and pull on the thread it may have a tendency to break because it's a little bit thinner so the all-purpose or the upholstery the uh, home decor thread I think is going to be a better solution now those of you that know how to sew and are advanced um, you can kind of fast forward through this part I'm going to show our beginners um, how to do a running stitch and I'm going to probably do mine about a half inch from the edge okay and probably space the stitches about a half inch apart okay so for my beginners I've got a piece of thread um, it's probably about 36 inches long okay I have already tied like a little knot in one end okay and then your other end is open there's no knot in it okay one end is knotted one end is open and um, then just kind of put your thread you know put it through the needle of course and then maybe just have the open end, end about halfway down don't pull what I'm trying to say is don't pull your open end clear down to the end where your knot is okay just have it about halfway down and then the rest of your thread okay and what we're gonna do is there on fabrics there is a wrong side which is usually the inside of the fabrics you don't see 
and there is a right side which is the beautiful outer edge of the fabric that you see a running stitch is just a long stitch that allows us as we pull on the thread to gather um, the fabric and kind of make like a ruffle okay whereas normally like on clothing there's these really tiny tight stitches and that is so your your clothing lays flat and it can't be pulled and cause like a ruffle okay but we're gonna make a long stitch so that we cause a ruffle because that's what we want because we want this flat round shape to kind of go into a ball okay so anywhere on your pumpkin go ahead and start from your right side okay about like I said a half inch from the edge and poke your needle through okay actually I apologize from the wrong side of your thread or your fabric from the wrong side of your fabric half inch from the edge poke your needle through okay and then pull it all the way out till your thread ends at the knot it can't be pulled through any further because your knot is stopping it okay we're gonna start a running stitch so about a half inch from where you ended on your right side of your fabric about a half inch from that thread you're gonna come over about a half inch and poke your needle back through the right side of fabric to the wrong side okay and pull it all the way through to your fabric won't come or your thread won't come through anymore sorry about that I'm getting my thread and my fabric words mixed up okay now we're gonna go back through again about a half inch away from here we're gonna take our thread through the wrong side of the fabric okay about a half inch away let me get up a little closer so you can see and we're gonna pull it through just like that okay so we have kind of a little stitch there you can see okay right there we're gonna go to the right side again where our threads coming out and we're gonna poke our needle back through about a half inch away to the wrong side of the fabric pull it through okay gonna go back from the wrong side of the fabric pull your thread through the right side of the fabric okay till it won't pull any further from the right side of the fabric gonna pull our thread back through to the wrong side of the fabric pull it till you can't pull it anymore we're gonna do that a couple more times and then I'll show you a quicker way wrong side to the right side pull it all the way through remember spacing about a half inch apart it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit your your stitches aren't you know exactly straight like if you end up a you know on accident would well, you know you have a stitch down here and you end up on accident this stitch is up here a little bit and then your next stitch is down here a little bit that's okay it does not have to be perfect okay all right coming back through the right side of the fabric to the wrong side we're gonna pull it through Do one more time wrong side to the right side we're gonna pull it through okay right side to the wrong side we're gonna pull it through all right now I'm gonna show you a little bit of a quicker way to kind of hold this and work okay we're gonna put our needle this trick I guess we'll call it. it's not really a trick but um, this little thing here is we're gonna put our needle through but we're not gonna pull our needle all the way out okay so we're gonna poke our needle through halfway away okay we're just gonna poke it through so there's just maybe a little bit of your needle sticking out not quite half and then what we're gonna do without pulling our needle all the way through is we're gonna turn our needle back on itself and come back through that fabric okay like this all right now we're going to leave it there and what we're going to do is begin pleating the fabric back and forth so our needle is now on the wrong side so we're going to fold our fabric toward us and poke our needle through okay then we're going to fold our fabric away from us and pull our needle through see how we're making little pleats little ruffles our needle still poke through and over here we're still hanging out with our thread over on this side okay we're going to pull the fabric toward us and see how my needle there's only about a half inch of my needle poking out so that's what's going to kind of help you there too about a half inch of your needles poking out so fold our fabric toward us poke your needle through half inch of your needles poking out pull our fabric away from us 
poke your needle through half of your needle sticking out pull our fabric toward us poke your needle through fold our fabric away from us poke your needle through you're gonna get quite of these on there see I've got quite a few little um, pleats on there okay fold our fabric toward us poke your needle through throw our fabric away from us poke your needle through and when you've got four or five of those on there go ahead and pull your needle and your thread now all the way through Oops, see my camera moved a little bit sorry about that I'm leaning on it pull your thread all the way through till it can't be you know pulled anymore and then pull your stitches till it all straightens back out okay just like that and we do that again go into our fabric pleat it away from us fold it toward us poking your needle through every time pleat it away from us we're moving a little faster now poking it folding it toward us poking our needle through pleat it away from us fold it toward us fold it away from us fold it toward us one more time fold it away from us fold it toward us I've got a few on there now it's kinda hard to hold so I'll go ahead and pull my needle through okay all the way through pull that thread out till it doesn't you know it kinda stops and then pull your fabric out so it's nice and straight okay look how many we did at once instead of just kinda going all the way through and all the way back through okay so that's a quicker way to do that stitch the running stitch so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do that running stitch all the way around the circle and then I'll be back okay okay so I stopped a little bit short of finishing my running stitch because I um, anticipated that those of you that are beginners um, you know you might be running low on your thread and that might be worrying you a little bit but you don't really have to worry about that because this running stitch as I talked earlier is going to help us to gather um, this outer edge together so if you're running really short on thread and you haven't finished your running stitch brought it you know um, a stitch away just from your knot then all you need to do is take some of your fabric and just gather it a little bit hold on to your thread and just gather just you just gently your this fabric is just really gonna glide along that thread since we have such long stitches and just literally just pull your fabric and it's just gonna gather up a little bit and it's going to expose more thread for you okay and do that as much as you need to so that you can finish your stitches so now what I'm going to do is go ahead and finish my stitches doing the back and forth motion with the fabric like we discussed just a little bit ago okay and then I'm going to finish now what I'm gonna do don't take your needle off of your thread yet okay what our what we're going to do is we're gonna start um, ruffling our fabric even more because we ruffled it a little bit your may yours may not be as ruffled as this but we ruffled it a little bit so that we could get more thread out to finish our stitches now we're going to ruffle it even more because we want this round circle to turn into a ball right so we can start stuffing it so we're just hold on to your needle and your thread together because if you let go of your needle and thread at this point as you're pulling your fabric to ruffle um, you may accidentally pull your thread back through your fabric and you don't want to do that yet you want to um, keep that thread from pulling back through your fabric okay and so what we're gonna do is start to ruffle it okay and as you ruffle it it's gonna expose more thread like we talked just a second ago keep ruffling it your threads gonna get longer and as you get just a little bit longer a little bit more ruffled you can kinda see our opening now so closing up pretty good and now you've got about this much thread out that's probably enough not to worry about it anymore that you can go ahead and pull your needle out of your thread get that out of the way this with this much thread out I doubt you're gonna pull back through your fabric okay so now what we're gonna do we could just keep pulling on this one end you know um, had we not pulled our needle off of our thread although we could rethread the needle but we could just keep pulling it at this one end and then when we're all done stuffing we can certainly close the hole by doing a little stitch in our uh, fabric but we don't need to do that okay remove the needle 
we're pulling on the thread so then let this side go don't worry about losing your fat your thread you got enough of it go ahead and switch over to where your knot is okay find your little knot right there and pull on your knot okay keep pulling on your knot and start gathering from this side now okay closing it just a little bit not too much and you know so you've got a nice kind of long piece out here and you've got it opening about like that if you have to open it up again a little bit more go ahead so now you've got a nice opening you want to start stuffing your pumpkin okay it's gonna take quite a bit of stuffing but just begin stuffing in there and stuff it to as full as you think you want it okay and I will be right back with my pumpkin stuffed okay so I've got my pumpkin stuffed as full as I want it stuffed now the hard part um, it's not necessarily closing the top, it's getting it knotted together, okay? So I hope you have the hand dexterity to do it. And probably as you're stuffing your pumpkin, you're going to notice that your gathers come out. Um, so you're stuffing your pumpkin, you're having to gather it closed again, you're stuffing it, it's opening it back up, closing it again, etc., etc. That's just That's just how it's going to work. But get your stuffing in there, and then let's close this up. And pull your threads as tight as you can do it. You could probably pull them both at the same time, or one at a time and get your um, opening uh, you know as closed as you can there okay and I would suggest we're doing this together but um, I would if you don't have someone to hold this for you that would probably be the best thing if someone can hold this for you like this part and then you can take this and tie this thread into a knot one-handed you're going to have to try and kind of gather this end together with your fabric and hold it and then come back here and like tie a knot okay so get that in there but it would be easiest at this point if you've got someone to help you okay I can let go I'm gonna let go of that it's gonna open a little bit that's okay because we only got like half of a knot and then I'm gonna come back in and close it some more and it would be nice for someone to place a little finger right in there for you so you can finish closing it up and if you can do it man I'm gonna try and do it right now see if I can get this done but yes it would be nice to someone to give you a little help right here but I wanna try it on camera come on baby and get this done with nails on get this thread through and grab it come on I feel like I'm all thumbs here at the moment there got that other end okay I'm not gonna pull it into a knot yet because I wanna close it again but I've got it to where, believe it or not, it can be pulled into a knot here. But yes, definitely if you've got someone to help you hold that knot and pull it through. Ah, <laughs> did it! That was a that was a <laughs> challenge. But it can be done, but the easiest is to pull it tight, have someone put a finger there, and then you do it yourself. But I did it. But it definitely is a challenge to kind of get half of a knot. Now I'm going to go through and knot it a few more times. That is a place right there where I was talking about as we're pulling it and trying to close this, that if we had used a regular thread, it definitely would have broke on us. I'm just going to try tie like, I don't know, 10 little knots here. It doesn't matter that this is still open because we'll cover that all up in my next video when we go to decorate this it will all be covered okay so let's cut that off we did it okay there we go now we've got a nice little round looking pumpkin and you can smush it and kind of make it your shape remember though we had all these strings hanging out now we want to make sections so my thought is you know, turn it over this way. We got a nice little shape going on. Begin to um, bring these strings out equal. I've got seven strings. I chose to do seven. I'm just going to kind of at first pull, you know, four 
four strings out so it's kind of corner to corner here okay so see I've got four four strings I got four equal sections and then I'm going to just kind of divide up my other sections kind of lay it out like a pizza pie that's the way to do it I'm gonna move this one over a little bit lay it out like a pizza pie there we go and there so now I've got like a pizza okay there we go I've got a little pizza pie there okay try and grab all those so they don't really move and flip her over now this is where we're doing this together because um, I'm just making this part up okay <laughs> Um, so what I figured is I would just kind of go each opposite end and I will grab the strings and I will pull them tight and we're going to make some knots here up at the top. That's not very tight yet. I want to pull it tight so that I make, see, I make a little divot there, make a section. Pull it tight and then tie a knot. As tight as you want it, tie a knot. Okay, there. And then maybe go out to the other two sections, out to the next two corners, pull it in. As tight as you think. We're making little sections. See, we've got little pumpkin sections now. As tight as you think and tie a knot. Okay. And then we've got three more sections here. So let's begin to pull these two make sure you are still in sections and you're not like over you know doing a different section so we've got those two pulled up pull it in so we can make it now you're starting to see the shapes right like I said I didn't see a tutorial on this part I just or like I did I didn't say that I did not see a tutorial on this part so I just made this one up. now we have an extra string because I wanted an odd number right but we have all these other little excess pieces up here that um, we use when we tied the other strings so see I almost here is it right here see there's already a section there I almost pulled it right back through that section so you gotta make sure you don't do that so I need to come over here and make a section and I we will I will be able to move these strings so I'm gonna come over here there's a nice kind of big section right here and pull it right in and I'm going to grab one of these other little loose strings up here from a knot that we tied earlier. Okay. I'm going to pull that section in. And I'm going to use that short piece up there and tie a knot and make a section. Okay. All our sections. Okay. So let's turn it over. And there we go now let's see these are a little bit bigger here than these ones so I'm just gonna take this and move it over a little bit I'm gonna fix my sections okay and let's see this one is quite big over here I want them a little bit more closely spaced together make this one a little bit bigger I only had that one section kinda of that last one that I wanted to make a little bit bigger there we go now those look a little bit more evenly spaced around Okay, so now we have our sections. It looks nice and neat on the bottom because we sewed it through the center. And then we have our top. That's looking cool. And look at our little sections. How freaking cool is that? My first pumpkin. Yeah, it's my first pumpkin too. I've not made one before. Let's fix this in there. There we go. That is so cool. All right, so a stem. I want to think about a stem here. I two options I can either take like I've got some of this burlap um, ribbon that I think would be awful cute Has it got wire in it yeah it's wired so that would be cute if you just kind of wound it up and did a couple of turns you could either do it like that kind of make a pumpkin so that you could come down with it that's not real my favorite. I'm just making this up on the fly. Um, if you've had a wider ribbon, you wouldn't. You can you know you can just kind of um, twist it in a circle like that. If you had a little bit wider ribbon, maybe a four or five inch wide ribbon, and kind of make like a little stem and put it through. So then when you're done, I'll just cut this. I don't mind cutting this little piece. 
I can use it for something else. And then you could like um, glue it into the center. And then you've got, you know, a little pumpkin stem. That would be cute. And then, you know, you could cut off your little excess strings here. I'd probably just poke them into the inside because it will all get covered with flowers and such that we're going to decorate with flowers and leaves, that kind of thing. So that's an option. And you can kind of glue that into the center. So I'm either probably going to do that. Like I said, I think it would look cuter with a wider ribbon because it would be taller. Or it could look really cute if you wanted to kind of add like maybe a knob to it. Look how cute that is. I know it's short, but look how cute that would be with a little knob on the top. Like that. Or here's one that is all, uh, it's a little taller, a little taller knob. It's a little just acrylic knob. And I could kind of put that in the center. Look at that from the top. That's super cute. And when you turn it to the side for a shabby chic look, there's an option for you. And you could just, you know, glue it in there. I almost like that look. I think I might go with that knob. If I had wider of this fabric, I would like it in that way because it could be taller. I would want to go tall if I was going this route. That's cute, but it just, eh, I, you know, I want a little twist to it. I love this, but I want it taller. Now, option, I could make it a little bit taller. I know this screw is for the other one, but it probably, yep, will fit. I could make it go a little bit taller by adding that screw and kind of gluing that screw in so that it sits a little bit taller up. I could add like a little bit more stuffing or something there and kind of glue that in the top and make that a little taller. Okay, because all this would be hidden. But I kind of like this knob. Okay, I kind of like this knob. And I love that that, because this is a shabby chic pumpkin, I love that it's got that acrylic knob for the center. So I think I'm going to glue that in there. And then we can make some little tendrils, okay? Um, so I'll be back. I'm going to grab the stuff that I'm going to make. I'm not going to glue this knob in quite yet. Um, I'll glue that in afterwards, but I'm going to just stuff it in there like that. So it's in. Well, let's just say for the sake of this video, it's in. But I want to make some little pumpkin curly cues, okay? So I'm going to grab that material and be right back. Okay, so I found some wire that I wanted to use to make some little pumpkin stem, uh, little curly tendrils coming out. Um, and what I found was I have a couple of different items. I have some wire like this that's in a package. Um, you can get these at like Joann's, Michael's, uh, Walmart. This is in silver. I think Walmart makes some green colored ones. I have some somewhere. I couldn't find it. But I did find uh, green wire on this wrap. This is a 22 gauge. I believe this is probably about an 18 gauge. Um, you can get wire that's like gold. Would be really pretty for a shabby chic pumpkin. I also found some of this. It's like a 32 gauge. It's like a fabric colored wire. And I believe I found it in the sewing section of either Joann's or Walmart. I can't remember which. And it was just like a couple of dollars. So you could take this um, white. And I would take like maybe a paintbrush or a pencil. Um, if you wanted to use white and just wrap it around and make some curly cues. Okay, so you're making curly cue. I did one over here and then cut it off. Okay, so I cut a section off. The only thing with this 32 gauge is it is pretty flimsy, but you know, it's for decoration. So it, you know, probably doesn't matter. Um, and then you can just kind of shape it the way you want. You know, as far as pulling it out or making the things close together, stuff it inside. And then you've got these cute little tendrils coming out of your pumpkin. Now, I know the white's not real seeable, but once I get uh, my colors on here, then I'll, of, of all my decoration, then I will stick my tendrils inside of that so the white might show really nice, nicely. Um, my option, though, is I kind of want to go with a little bit uh, stronger wire just for my preference. So I would do the same thing. I would take this wire, like I said, it's probably 18 gauge. I would wrap it around like the pencil or the paintbrush again. See, it's it's thicker, but it's still flexible to work with. 
Okay, cut your piece off. I'm going to leave a, an, an edge here just so I've got a piece to tuck in. Cut a piece off. I would probably make it longer than this, but this is just for tutorial purposes. Okay, and then again, you can kind of, sh you know, move this around how you like it. You can tuck it right inside, and then you've got this cute little curly cue coming out of your pumpkin. Isn't that cute? Um, just silver right now against that white, I really like that contrast. However, like I said, once I get all the color in there, so since I want to probably use this wire, probably what I'll do is I will take one of those wires, I'll make like three curly cues, I'll make an odd number, and then I'll take another of the wire and I'll probably spray paint it white. And then make like three more curly cues. And then once I'm done decorating and I tuck all the wires in, I can try it with the silver or the white and see which ones I like best. Okay, so that is the end of this tutorial. I know it was a little bit long, but I really wanted to do this in real time with you. I mean, especially in case we had some beginners out there. Like I said earlier, I will have a link down below, or it might pop up right here on this video. I'll probably put it in both places to the video that shows me decorating this pumpkin. I will fast forward it, but I will come in, you know, probably at the end, um, maybe somewhere in the middle to show you a couple things, but I'll definitely come at the end and then talk about, you know, what I did uh, with decorating, okay? Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Please like this video. You can also share it on social media if you'd like. If you would care to, make a comment down below. I really love reading those. I thank you for your time taking to do that. I also have links to my blog and Pinterest down below where you can get more close-up views of projects that I've made. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye!